After first admitting that it deliberately tried to skirt tests for emission standards, Volkswagen is now dealing with another scandal that has customers and competitors scratching their heads. To delve a bit deeper into all of it, we are joined by Peter Lees. From, uh, he is a vehicle engineer from Robeson Forensic. Judith Stark is a professor of environmental studies and Bill Rosenberg is from Drexel University. He's sticking around. And via Skype is Jeff Thurk. He's an assistant professor of economics at the University of Notre Dame. We welcome all of you. Boy, this was really a surprise. This is a major company. This is the biggest automaker in the world. And you had the CEO come out and say, yeah, we were, we were playing around with the, the software and we were essentially lying to you. Boy, that's quite an admission. We'll start with you. Uh, a absolutely it is. Uh, I don't think we've seen this type of admission uh, of, of this type of uh, uh, and guilt uh, really forever. And what makes me angry is that uh, he almost said it with a smile if you saw him do the press conference and walked away with a pretty mm -hmm. good golden parachute even yes. though everyone probably knew this was going on. How does this happen? Well, Judith, how does this happen? Great question. And in a huge institution like VW, which is noted for its hierarchical centralizing of power, mm -hmm. it is inconceivable to me that the top people would not have known that this was going on. So how did it happen? We have yet to find the full story on this. We saw, of course, the situation last year with General Motors in which they were, uh, had problems with the ignition mm -hmm. switches. Is this systemic in the corporate culture now, a drive to make money where they'll and I'll well, this, is, this, this isn't new. I mean, I, it, when this story was breaking, I went back and was thinking about the Ford Pinto. Sure. That, mm -hmm. that basically right. become an inferno. Yes. Uh, the company knew mm -hmm. You have to be a of a certain age, by yes. the way, to remember yes. right, the but Ford the Pinto. The company knew that if it got hit mm -hmm. from behind, it was going to blow up, and they made an economic mm -hmm. calculation right. that was cheaper to pay the insurance mm -hmm. policies off than it was to fix the car. I think it's the same thing here. This company decided that they, they didn't know whether they were going to get caught, they know that every company is being really competitive about how they position their vehicles mm -hmm. in terms of the tests. In fact, when I was riding up today, I'm not going to name the type of car that I have, but it's a car that is a hybrid. Mm -hmm. It has gas and it has uh, a battery. Right. And I was told it was going to get 45 or 50 miles per gallon. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything close to that. Okay, so everyone knows that the numbers that you get are basically mm -hmm. fictitious. Mm -hmm. But the hope is at least that everyone's putting mm -hmm. on their socks the same way. So you can compare a 38 and, mile and, and we find versus out that a 35. That is not the case. And now what we're finding is right. that not only are they lying in a sense about the actual numbers, but there's conniving going all in the way. Peter, Peter we're going to go to you, but before we do, let's, go, let's bounce over to uh, Notre Dame University uh, where Jeff Thork is here. Let, let's, let's turn this into an economic question. It might not be your area of expertise, uh, Jeff, but you know, does it come down to how much we're making every quarter and we have to make that money regardless? And if it means messing around with the software, we're going to do that. Uh, to be honest, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, well, really what we show is that these diesel vehicles in Europe were generated a lot of money for uh, Volkswagen and for European auto manufacturers in general. So if you want to take that perspective, I mean, yeah, they, they have shareholders. Uh, owners, you know, we can be owners of Volkswagen, and um, they do want to generate a lot of money. And Volkswagen, uh, particularly the TDI, that is a big money maker, is a big money maker for the company in Europe as early as the 1990s, and they've made a concerted push to try to make it uh, to extend that competitive advantage into the American market. And I think uh, I was working at the Wall Street Journal when this uh, this story broke years ago with regard to General Motors, and I was amazed that that happened. This announcement about VW came on the same week where we found out the head of the peanut butter company, if you remember, actually uh, knew that there was mm -hmm. hysteria in the peanut butter, but sold it anyway. Twenty-eight people were killed. Uh, the gentleman who mm -hmm. bought the young man who bought the drug company and uh, took that one little pill, which was worth about three dollars, mm -hmm. and jacked up the price. <laughs> There seems to be a corporate malfeasance, and I don't want to paint everybody with the same brush, but this Volkswagen story is startling to but me. But if you take a look, I mean, it depends on how you want to, what lens we use. In China, when they had the melamine problem with the infant formula, yes. what happened to the, the chief executive of that company? He was shot. Yes. Okay. And in this case, and, he, and, and yeah. I mean, just execute. I know. Okay. In the United States and Western Europe, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're a different mm -hmm. type of society. The question mm -hmm. is, when does corporate responsibility really come in? Would Volkswagen well, it, come in and take away the golden parachute? Uh, would they do something like that? That's and, really what we're talking about. And they did about. not. Peter mm -hmm. Lease uh, talking about how cars are made and so on and so forth. 
it, it not only was software that, that, that cheated on the, the test, but knew that the test was going on and then switched. This is really a sophisticated equipment, isn't it? Actually, no. Uh, the, the test procedures <laughs> to, uh, to test these re uh, emissions requirements are, are well documented. Right. It's a, a very well regimented mm -hmm. test. Right. Um, and especially in today's world with the advances in technology that we put in the vehicles, mm -hmm. it's very easy to discern um, within probably 15 seconds of startup, is that vehicle on a dynamometer? Is somebody driving it down the street? Am I being emissions tested? So are, are, you, are you saying that those that did the test knew they were being schnookered and said nothing, or that they really mm -hmm. didn't know? And Volkswagen's technology was so advanced that they couldn't find that out. Well, certainly within Volkswagen, uh, many people would have had to have known. Mm -hmm. um, there's, of course, you know, hundreds and thousands of people involved in bringing sure. a new vehicle to market. So uh, within Volkswagen, um, many people had to know. And what a lot of uh, people don't understand is that to sell a vehicle, uh, you have to go through the certification process. Right. We found out that uh, the EPA said, we're not going to certify your 2016 models until you tell us what's going on with these other models. Right. That's a self-certification process. So I, as a manufacturer, Which means the will test it. You're self-testing and then you're reporting to the government that everything's okay. Yes, you, you, will, you will fill out a sheet that says, we ran this particular vehicle with this engine and this transmission package mm -hmm. to the uh, required uh, test procedure. Here are the numbers. Mm -hmm. We pass. Please uh, allow us to sell this Is there this any vehicle. way to say that this was not a bald-faced lie? I, I don't think it was a and, lie. And you mentioned that you've had how many diesel vehicles I've and they've been three, Volkswagen. I've had three diesel vehicles. This last one I'm driving is one of the vehicles that had been outfitted with this mm -hmm. illegal and immoral you know, set of uh, mechanics. And you, and, and you teach? I teach environmental ethics. Okay. And Unbeknownst to you, absolutely. you're spewing out emissions. That's exactly right. So here's the penalty that I think would be appropriate for these engineers on two points. First of all, lock these guys, and they're probably mostly guys, lock these guys in their labs until they can figure out how to remove 900,000 tons of nitrogen oxide from the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. That's one thing they should do. The second thing they should do, because this is a major health issue, nitrogen oxide is the thing that, that is uh, an essential element of smog, and try to figure out how they can help mitigate the public health dimensions right of this particular uh, let, let, Let's go to Jeff for a moment. Jeff, what's your take on how the CEO of Volkswagen was dealt with, uh, with his golden parachute? Do you think there should have been some sort of other treatment of him? Um, yeah, th that's a tough thing for me to say. Uh, I definitely understand uh, kind of your perspective. The Who really gets hammered in this? As an economist, it's if you look at Volkswagen, the value of Volkswagen uh, since the scandal, it's what dropped about 20%. Um, so really the people that are getting hammered in this are the Volks owners of Volkswagen uh, and owners of Volkswagen cars. And in terms of the golden parachute, yeah, I mean, uh, there's definitely the, I would, like to, I would like to see, again, as an economist, I would like to see that the um, uh, people internalize costs. Uh, if I can touch on one point though, is that, uh, Emission standards in the U.S. and in Europe are very different. Uh, in Europe, they're designed to curb greenhouse gas emissions, uh, and they don't care as much as uh, regulation doesn't pay as, as much to um, nitrogen oxide. Now, the question then is, uh, would, which is the more uh, ha has the largest health impact on health? So, to say, uh, you know, that diesels, in, by and large, by themselves, are kind of contributing to uh, poor health standards is really to take a stand uh, that nitrogen oxide has a larger impact on health than, um, than greenhouse gas emissions. That may be okay. true, but that seems like an open question. You know, I don't know why this story didn't make a bigger splash in the United States. Uh, I don't know if environmental mm -hmm. issues are really not a big concern for the American public, but it seemed to just come and go in a couple of news mm -hmm. cycles, and that was the end of that, and the CEO skips mm -hmm. away with his big check, and everybody smiles, and, and we'll fix this. You know where it made a big play? In Canada. Mm -hmm. Because more folks are driving uh, vehicles with diesel, diesel engines there than here in the United States. So I was in Canada when this story broke, it was a big deal. We've run out of time, I'm told. I thank you all for being here. Thank you so thank much you. for joining us. I'm Frank Zappola. Enjoy your weekend, and we will see you next time.